Hang up on your weekly news show. A drought is officially declared in some parts of the country. But what does that actually mean? Plus life after Britain's Got Talent. We catch up with Anishwa, the climate change poet who wowed the judges and all the rest of us. Hi, FYI. If there's ever a time to save this planet, it's now. But how do we spread this message to others, including adults? I think I may have cracked it. Welcome to FYI. Now check out what we've just found. So this is Westminster before, and this is after. I mean, just look at the difference. Look at how some of our country's most famous landmarks have been scorched by the heat waves we've been having. It's been the driest first six months of the year since 1976, plus record-breaking temperatures. And this is how the UK looks from space now. I mean, just look at that. You can see where those record temperatures and lack of rainfall have hit hard. And it's those really dry areas of England that experts say are now officially experiencing a drought. Well, that got us thinking, didn't it, Maya? Yeah. What does that actually mean? A drought is usually something you hear about in hot countries in Africa, not England. No, so right, hear us out. We've been digging up the info. So these are the areas of the UK where there is officially a drought, and there could be more areas in the coming weeks. Even though it has rained recently in many areas, it's just nowhere near enough to fill up our reservoirs that provide water to millions of people. So when an area is officially experiencing a drought, it means the government and water companies need to bring in rules to stop us using as much water such as hosepipe bands. More water than usual could also be taken from rivers. Members of FY News Clubs from across the UK have been sending in their own ideas of how we can save water. First of all, remember to keep your sprinklers off to conserve water. And second of all, for the indoors, always fill up your dishwasher and washing machine to the brim to make sure that they're more efficient. My first tip to save water is to have five minute showers instead of long, long baths. And my second tip is to turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth. Reuse your towels instead of constantly washing them after every shower. And number two, make sure you turn your taps off tightly, preventing any chances of dripping water. A way we can recycle our water is by using a washing up bowl in the sink whilst we're washing our dirty plates and forks and spoons. And then we can use that water again to water our plants. That way we don't have to waste our water and our plants can stay hydrated as well as us. Good ideas there. I think collecting rainwater would be a good one, you know, with the barrels. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit difficult, but you know, it's a suggestion. Or maybe it's something simpler, just having shorter showers. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, half of Europe is affected by huge forest fires. Severe temperatures and little rainfall have made the forest so dry that firefighters across France, Spain, Germany and other countries are battling to keep huge fires under control. We don't have to tell you guys that this extreme weather is down to climate change. Scientists are warning us that heat waves will be more common if we don't stop polluting our atmosphere with gases that lead to climate change. Here on FYI, we'll be checking out the latest news on climate change. We'll be meeting the campaigners making a stand, checking out new technology to beat global warming and putting those with the power to make real change on the spot. We're going to start with Anish War. Remember him? Hello! He's the seven-year-old climate activist that uses poetry to get his message across. His performance on Britain's Got Talent wowed the judges, and he's still at it, talking about how we can save our planet in any way we can. Here's some of his top tips from his back garden, just for FYI. The gorgeous peacocks stand their way. Fantastic golden eagles glide in display. But there's no other planet like Earth. When I went to Brins Got Talent, I was overwhelmed. Like, it felt really amazing. I couldn't believe a like. Thank you, everyone. And do you know why I care about this nature so much? It's because every animal has its own superpower. Like our tiny ants around and literally two of them can lift an apple. <sighs> my inspirational spot is near my giant pond. It is filled with life. That's why 
This garden, the whole of it, is my square of inspiration. Here is the grassland habitat. Be very slow over here. Excuse me, bees. But these bees are the best pollinators on the planet. My pond is filled with life. You can tell because it's like even just looking. Is that green colour? Because there's lots of algae. And algae is a great food source for many creatures. You know all your food waste? Don't put them in the black bin. The black bin is for just throwing away. If you put them in the green bin or just digging a hole and putting them in your garden and covering them, that can be a fertiliser. It can help all the soil and that's what sometimes we do. Let's protect this planet we all adore and keep it safe forevermore. Anyone can report on FYI. This is your show. All you have to do is send us details about the story you want to tell. It can be about you, an issue you want to report on, or even an event you want to tell us about. Even better, get your teacher to set up an FYI news club at your school. Every club has a chance to take part in the programme. For more details, head to our webpage, first.news slash FYI. Now, if you don't like spiders, look away. So what do you make of claims that scientists have made dead spiders into mini robots? Fake or fact? Well, it's fact. Scientists turn dead wolf spiders into mini grippers by taking control of their bodies with a mechanical rig. They could be used to get a grip on small objects in tight spaces. For info on how to tell if a story is fake or fact, head to Sky Kids On Demand or our webpage and check out our I Don't Get It explainer on how to spot fake news. Many pupils are beginning to receive their GCSE results. In fact, my sisters are on their way at the minute. But is it too soon to be tested in an exam? They're the first GCSE exam since COVID-19 emerged in 2019. We found a survey that says nine in 10 teachers fear that students will not get the grades they deserve. Even though teachers are marking our exam papers generously, you know, taking into account that many of us are behind on schoolwork, we've been thinking, is it fair to bring back exams? Here's some members of an FYI news club at Southgate School in London and what they think. Pupils in England are going to be given advance notice of exam topics and their answers will be marked more leniently this year. I think it's fair that GCSEs have been graded more generously because of COVID. A lot of people missed out, like, on learning in lockdown. I think they should do it for the next couple of years. People have, like, missed out and I know some people definitely didn't attend the online lessons. Yeah. If there was additional support given to GCSE students, I think exams wouldn't have really been needed to be generously graded. It's hoped that the changes will be fairer to teenagers who have missed school during the pandemic. I do think that we would, it would be better if we received more guidance or to revise for our GCSEs because it would help us but a lot of kids don't know how to revise and they just think reading over their notes and reading like a textbook will help when it actually does them. I think in my opinion we should be graded like not only for exams but also like the whole year because you might do well the whole year and then the day of the exam you just have a bad day. Yeah like in class you might be really good at history but when you're doing like a history exam or test because you're stressed it might not be as well as you wanted it to be so yeah. I can't think of a better way to be assessed I'll be honest. I feel like seeing how students have progressed throughout the years really shows their academic ability in a better way than just an exam, a written exam. I agree, but I think perhaps a combination of both would be the best. I think it's fair to say that school is still a bit tough for many of us after the pandemic, so we got a hold of Laverne for some advice. Hey Laverne! Hi there! So what would your advice be if you didn't get the exam results you expected? Gosh, well, I suppose the first thing I'd say is take a deep breath. You know, setbacks happen, but plans can be put in place to help you manage things. Try and be a bit kind to yourself. Focus on the things that you can change and try not to dwell on the things that you can't change. That's really good advice. So new schools, new experiences, new year group. How would you suggest we deal with all these pressures? You know, the opportunity to make new friendships is really, really important. Having some worries about that 
is often quite ordinary. You know, you might want to be checking out with friends and seeing how they're feeling so that you don't get too caught up and think that it's only you that have got these worries. I think it's also very helpful to talk to other friends or your parents or your siblings and see how they've managed these sorts of challenges. Thanks for the advice, Laverne. Bye. Bye then. And for more contacts of where to get support, head to our webpage, first.news FYI. Has someone ever said something upsetting to you, but they didn't intend to insult you? Or have you ever judged somebody based on their appearance and got them totally wrong? Well, it's called unconscious bias. I know we don't get it either. So we got FY Scarlett to investigate a phrase that's been doing the rounds. And check this out, she even got her own quiz show. It's time to play Guess Their Job! Hello everybody and welcome to the game show that you can play from home. We've got four people for you to check out and they're all real people with real jobs. And all you need to do is figure out which important job they do. Okay, so the six options are cleaner, astronaut, taxi driver, scientist, teacher or nurse. So, let's start off with person A. What job do you think she does? Well, she's a... Taxi driver! If you got that right, then give yourself one point. Next up is person B. Could she be a cleaner, an astronaut, scientist, teacher or nurse? OK, so the answer is... She's a scientist. In fact, this is Dr. Uslam Terezi, who invented the first COVID vaccine. One point if you got that right. Question three. Can you figure out which of the four remaining jobs this man does? Well, his name is Stuart Tuckwood. He's from Liverpool. And his job is... A nurse! Finally, is this woman a cleaner, an astronaut or a teacher? Well, her name is Nora al Matrushi. She's from the United Arab Emirates, and her job is... an astronaut! If you got all four correct, then congratulations, give yourself a huge round of applause. But if you didn't get them all right, then don't worry. The fact is that all of us make judgments about people before we really know them, just because of how they look, the way they speak, or whether they're a boy or a girl. It's called unconscious bias. And recently, there's been a lot of headlines about it. At first, I didn't understand what it meant, but it turns out that we can all be guilty of quickly forming unfair opinions about certain types of people. And we're not even aware that we're doing it. But why does it matter? We're only human, right? Let's get an expert's opinion on this. I've got a hold of Dr. Doyne Atawalligan from the University of Oxford. She's a psychologist who has helped loads of top companies make sure that they're being fair when hiring people. Hi, Dr. Doyen. Hi, Scarlett. So, is unconscious bias something that we should be worried about? It is, Scarlett, absolutely. The thing is, if you label someone as not the sort of person you want to be friends with or not quite suitable for a job, just because of the way they look or because of their accent, then that isn't fair and you could be limiting their opportunities. And actually, if you do this in a way consistently that has a negative impact on a group of people because of a particular characteristic that they have, such as their gender or their race or their disability, that could be what we refer to as discrimination and is illegal. So what can we do to make sure that our unconscious bias doesn't lead to us being unfair about people? That's a really great question, Scarlett. You've probably heard the expression, don't judge a book by its cover. And in essence, that's the answer. Thank you, Dr. Doyen, that's great advice. Great, Scarlett. So the important thing we all need to remember is to be open-minded about the people we meet, to not make assumptions about them and what they're capable of, and to look below the surface to find out more about them. Got it. For more I Don't Get It explainers on just about everything, head to Sky Kids On Demand or our webpage. We're finishing with something that you may have missed in the sky, the biggest meteor shower of the year. The display is caused by Earth colliding with debris left behind by a comet that passes every July and August. See you next time.